So we take that previous demonstration uh, on the board of the hydrogen uh, and the iodine together. Well, here they are now colliding with each other to form HI, but you see the HI can reform these two again, so what we do is we draw a top arrow pointing that way and a bottom arrow pointing that way, and that signifies equilibrium. Something that's important to mention, equi these differing amounts at equilibrium of products and reactant concentrations uh, that are held consistent, well that was never lost on any scientist at any, at any time, they're able to take these numbers, our concentrations at equilibrium, and turn them into a constant, a constant number. Like for instance, if we got 90 and 10 percent here, we could divide 90 by 10 and get the number 9, and that could be a constant, because we're always going to get 90 percent of product form. Well, okay, so we take this information, and we, well, we, we kind of straighten it out and give it a little bit more math than just taking 90 and 10 percent. We have the ability to be able to take the concentrations of products and reactants, set up a ratio, and then get a constant number for that reaction at a given temperature. This is very important in the industrial world. Every industrial thing that, that we create, whether it be aspirin or natural gas that comes out of the ground, all have equilibrium processes that must be understood and values that need to be expressed. Okay, here it comes. Watch this. We take the concentration of the HI, and we write concentration as brackets around the chemical. And then we divide it by the concentrations of these two chemicals, which are the H2 and the I2. And when we do that, but recognizing that, you see that 2 in front? That actually makes a difference in terms of what we are going to get for our constant value. And so we take the two, the coefficient in front of any chemical, and we make it the power to which that concentration is taken. The concentration of the HI squared divided by the concentration of H2 and I2 at a certain temperature will always give us a constant. And this is how we write constant. Because we like to write it in German, we write the constant K. K equals the concentration of HI squared over H2 times I2. You just wrote for this reaction something called the equilibrium expression. Well, you didn't write it, I just did. You can be asked to write the equilibrium expression for a reaction, which is just writing what we just did in the previous one. We write down ratio and then make it equal to K. So, here's a reaction. We've got N2 plus 3Cl2 gas makes or is in equilibrium with its product which is 2 NCl3 gas. Now it's correctly balanced 1, 3, 2. How do we write the expression for that? You always write K equals. It's the first thing. And then it's always products over reactants. Write their concentrations. It's the concentration of the NCl3. These brackets mean concentration. What do we do with that number in front? The power to which the concentration is taken. And that's divided by the concentration of the N2 don't have to put the 1, and the concentration of the Cl2, but it's cubed. Now, if we knew the concentrations of these chemicals at equilibrium, and plug them in here, cubing that one, squaring that one, dividing these two after being multiplied together into that, we will get a value of K. What's the significance of that? Like, who cares? Like, why would you do that? Because look, what if somebody said to you, hey, at equilibrium, I know the concentration of this and this, so how much of this will actually form? This might be my product, which could be very important. It might be like aspirin or Tylenol you're making at the factory. I, gotta, I know my concentrations of ingredients. If I know the K value, then I can solve for this unknown and figure out how much I'm going to make. Ah, oh, that's why we... Oh.